today on CityCast Madison. It's no secret that Madison winners are no joke and certainly not beloved by all, but they're a lot more manageable when you know some basics like how to get around in the snow, where to park, and what you're responsible for with ice removal. Abby Becker, a former Cap Times reporter, penned a handy winter survival guide for Madison Minutes to help you navigate winter in this city. It's Tuesday, January 10th. I'm Bianca Martin, and this is CityCast Madison. Abby, hello. Hi, Bianca. It's great to, to be here chatting with you. Oh my goodness. So great to chat with you. And I'm super excited because you wrote this wonderful guide, How to Survive and Thrive in Madison Winter. And might be asking the obvious, but why make a guide? Winter can be tough. It's difficult. I personally don't love the cold. I don't like, you know, trying to make a bunch of decisions outside when I'm very cold. So this guide is meant to really be just a useful resource that Madison residents can return to uh, winter after winter and refer to anything that they might need to know to help get them through various winter activities, whether that is parking, uh, figuring out uh, bus delays, uh, you know, during a winter snowstorm. I often have to refer, um, you know, to the city's website uh, to look up information, you know, right. for alternate side parking can never keep it straight. So I hope that this is a becomes a helpful place for people to return to. Yeah, I mean, it truly has all of those things. And we're going to dig into those to kind of give the highlights for folks. So let's get into it. Um, Parking, as you said, like, that's one of the main headlines you cover. The infamous alternate side parking rules. What should we know there? Yeah, so honestly, my biggest takeaway is sign up for the text through the city. (laughs) It will text you when to park, um, what side of the street. So you don't actually have to keep it straight. The city will do it for you, which is so nice. But if you do want to know those specific details, um, you should know that from mid-November to mid-March, Madison follows alternate side parking rules. So on even numbered calendar days, you need to park on the even house numbered side of the street from 1 a.m. to 7 a.m. And obviously the opposite on odd numbered days. This, uh, though, a caveat to know is that if you're in the snow emergency zone, then alternate side parking is only in effect during a snow emergency. Is that kind of closer to downtown? area or yeah cluster downtown and the neighborhoods surrounding it Uh, there's a map linked in the guide and you can also find it on the city's website too to see if your neighborhood is affected Uh, madison will declare those snow emergencies when all residential streets need to be plowed um, and that typically occurs when snow accumulates to three inches or more yeah and i want to talk about kind of responsibilities for homeowners and um, people who are renters about their sidewalks and what they have to take care of there. Like, it snowed. What do I do? What am I responsible for? So the biggest thing to know is that, you know, you are required to shovel your sidewalk from side to side after it snows. So this is a big one. This also was uh, when I first moved to Madison was a new rule to me. So, yes, if you're a homeowner, you are required to keep the sidewalk in front of your home cleared. You know, and if you're a tenant, you know, you should check, I think, in the lease or with your landlord about who is required uh, to do that. You know, for example, I lived in one apartment one year and my landlord explicitly told me, hey, when it snows, you're responsible for shoveling. Sometimes it's not clear. And so I think as a tenant, just check your lease. If it's not specified there, check it in with your landlord just so there's no surprises. You know, and the goal of this rule, this city ordinance, is to make the public sidewalk safe for, you know, everyone. Right, right. And it does get really, really icy here. And so I want to get into the great salt debate. Let's um, do it. Because there's a new city ordinance that is... Getting around uh, how much salt you can use. Salt is kind of a big deal. So how do you know when to use sand and when to use salt? Yes, great question. So sand is often used for traction. Um, You know, so sometimes that's on the streets to help with cars. You know, it can be helpful on sidewalks so your boots can grip on it so you're not tripping on ice that does accumulate. Salt is helpful because it does melt the ice, uh, but salt can be not so great for the environment, right? So, I mean, if whatever salt you put out, eventually that does get swept into um, the storm drains. It gets, you know, eventually ends up in the lake and makes it salty. And that is not great for a number of reasons. But I think where you're getting in with the great salt debate is that, well, we do need to make our sidewalk safe and people need to be safe walking down it. And 
the key in all of this is to to find that right balance. Um, so, I mean, this new ordinance that the city, um, you know, has passed basically says that excess salt and chemical melting agents shouldn't accumulate on the sidewalk and then should be removed after the snow and the ice melt. So you should sweep that all the way just so it doesn't end up, you know, in the lakes. I don't know about you, but if you're, you know, walking around town or, um, you know, sometimes in front of businesses, you see kind of big piles of salt and it kind of takes on like a bluish hue, the ones that I've seen. Yeah, I don't love Um, it. (laughs) I don't love it. Yeah, yeah. So just like a huge dumped pile of salt. And so I I think that that is what the ordinance is trying to address and really just help make um, the community's use of salt, you know, less throughout the entire city. And do we know the amount of salt we can use? So I know that uh, the gu- guidance is that, you know, a coffee mug of salt is enough to treat a 20 foot driveway or I think about 10 sidewalk squares. You really just need a sprinkle. It's tempting to use more because you do want to get rid of it, get rid of the ice. And I get that uh, for sure. But um, a small amount can go a long way. Right. And that's apparently something, you know, you could get you can get fined if you're not following that the new city ordinance. Yeah. Yeah. So I think you'll first get a notice. um, But then after that, I think the first fine is one hundred and twenty four dollars. And then if you get a second fine, then it would be about I think one hundred and eighty seven dollars is the fine for that. It's Um, pretty steep. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I wouldn't want to get that. So I I would take that that seriously. I will also note, too, that the salt doesn't work in really cold temperatures. So I think when it the temp drops below 15 degrees, it doesn't work. So it's there's no use in putting it out at that point. One thing that I love about Madison, like actually so, so much is the there are a fair amount of winter bikers people who bike all year round, bike commuters. And I always thought that was so like hardcore. I was just like, wow. And you wrote about that as well. Yes. Well, I just want to echo that these winter bikers are incredibly hardcore. Sometimes I see bikers with those, um, like the, the fat, the fat tires, right. To right, you know, exactly. bike in the winter. And I'm just like, kudos to you. I, I could not do it. Um, I do not want mm. to try to do it. Um, but hats off to you. With serious ski masks. Cause we don't just have any winter. <laughs> like we have serious. Winter. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. So, you know, I support all bikers who are biking in the winter. Uh, let me help you do your thing. I'm not going to join you for sure. But, um, yes, Madison will plow the arterial bike paths as needed after it snows, and then also when a general plow is happening. And then the city also does send plows on the bike paths after the big street plowing is finished to remove any snow buildup. But, you know, I was reading on um, the city's information that when you're biking in on-street bike lanes, you know, after a snowfall, it's just like, it's just really tough. You know, I mean, there's parked cars. Those are challenges. Snow builds up against the cars from the plows. Um, so it's difficult, I think, for the city to get all of that out. And, you know, you can also report bike path concerns to the city online if you think a special area needs attention. So I think bikers, that'd be good to know as well. And then also the city has tips on how to bike safely in the winter. So I was reading through those as well. Any bikers who need additional tips can check those out. Yeah. And I'm told that your bike lock can freeze. So if you're out there, keep Ooh, that in mind. That That's good to know. That's something I, I did not think about. Yeah. And I, I want to talk about snow days. Like Madison is a really interesting place. Um, but I'm curious, like, if anything's changed in my memory, when I was a student at UW, there is a very high threshold for calling a snow day or calling school off. Has that changed? I think the threshold is still high. You know, in my experience, it's been quite rare. So if you're a student during winter on campus, uh, just plan to bundle up and go to class. Or or maybe your class is uh, virtual anyway, (laughs) so you can stay warm. There was a triumphant moment when I actually was under in undergrad and there was during their great blizzard, there was a snow day and people were like blown away that it happened. And it hadn't the snow day, I guess, hadn't happened for like decades. So yeah, well, you were part of a historic moment, Bianca. I was. And we all went out and we, you know, really made the most of it. What about the school district? Are they pretty um, communicative about, you know, getting notices out, that sort of thing? Yeah. So families can typically expect a decision by 9 p.m. the night before a snow day is called. I know I think the the school district's website, they have information that says, you know, they'll close schools when it's negative 25, um, which Mm. is quite, quite chilly. (laughs) So, uh, you know, that's that number is a factor that I know that they take in consideration as well. And that information is, you know, pushed out to families, you know, in emails and texts. And I think there's also an automated call system uh, for families of the school district. So everyone will know if there's a snow day. 
I'm remembering as a kid sitting in front of the TV, you know, and watching all the schools like scroll across the bottom because that was oh, yeah. really our only way to find out. It was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you can you share like kind of specifically the text alerts that you'd recommend uh, folks sign up for? Yes, definitely. So um, just the, there's a general one, the city of Madison winter alerts um, is what I would sign up for. You know, this, this isn't a text alert, but I think it's super helpful. The city has um, a tool on its website just called, where do I park? Um, so look that up, uh, plug in the date um, and it'll tell you where to park. Um, and again, you know, sometimes I, I'm fairly confident I know the rules, um, but I also get a little paranoid and don't want my car towed or ticketed. So I like to just double check myself online there. Absolutely. And then, of course, you know, alerts through the school district and the university. Um, you know, I think those are, you know, pretty clear for those who are, you know, enrolled in those schools. And then Metro Transit, I'd say, would be the, the biggest one for bus riders. You can sign up for um, text or email rider alerts through Metro Transit. And I love that, too, because, again, I just get them all on my phone. So uh, I know whether to expect delays or not. So we've talked about all the rules and ordinances, you know, all the fun stuff, but there are actual fun things to do during winter. And you said you you don't love the cold, but you did write this guide. So I feel like there's maybe somewhere inside of you that likes the winter, (laughs) but are there any things you like to do during the winter here in Madison? Yes, somewhere deep down, I think I do like winter. Um, don't like being cold, but winter activities are so fun. And I think one thing I've learned from living in Madison for um, for a little bit now is that people have fun in the winter and it's a beautiful season. But some of my favorite things to do are to ice skate outside in the winter. I love when uh, Madison Parks opens the ice rinks. You know, I think my favorite spot is the lagoon on Warner Park. Um, it feels kind of secretive and, um, you know, it's, it feels really magical too. Um, it's, there's usually not many folks out. You're right on the lagoon, so you can see, you know, kind of like all the frozen marsh area. Um, mm. So that's pretty cool. Although I will say you can't rent ice skates there, so you have to bring your own. But if you do need to rent ice skates, you could go to Elver Park, Tenney Park, or Vilas Park and rent rent ice skates there. So highly recommend to do in Madison. Top yeah. Uh, top thing to do for me, at least, um, yeah. when, the, the, when the ice rings open. Oh, my gosh. I had so much fun. I went to like the Edgewater has a little one last year. It's and, a super cute one. And also like getting out during the winter, like getting out on the lake, like <laughs> the lakes freeze, walking on it's the lake. It's the coolest thing ever. It is <laughs> seriously the coolest thing ever. And I, every time I do it, I, I'm just like in disbelief that it's actually possible. And again, maybe it's because I didn't grow up in Wisconsin, but I am still just floored every time that that I can do that. So I always do try to to walk on on the ice in the winter, especially when you're, you know, you can be standing on, you know, Lake Monona in front of Monona Terrace, just like staring at it, you know, Mm -hmm. all the windows there. And yeah, again, it, it is kind of just a magical experience and I think makes you appreciate where you live every winter. Abby, thank you so much for giving us uh, all of these details about how to be prepared for winter. And there are even more details in your guide that you made, and we will be linking that to our show notes. So we really appreciate you taking the time. Wonderful. It was great to be here and to chat about this and check out the guide. Know what to do in winter. That was Abby Becker, former Cap Times reporter. You can find the link to Abby's winter survival guide in our show notes. And here's what else Madison's talking about. The city of Madison wants you to name one of its snow plows. Actually, four different types of snow removal equipment, including a double wing plow truck, a tractor for plowing bike paths, a large brine spitting tanker truck, and a front loader with a plow. The deadline to submit your name suggestions is this Friday, January 13th. The punnier the name, the better. The city is also encouraging suggestions with local connections and to highlight Madison's quirky spirit. So get funky. 550 names have already been submitted. So here's a taste of what the competition looks like. A nod to the Sopranos with plowy walnuts, Then there's Justin Timberflake, Aldo Leocold, my favorite, and yes, Plowy McPlowface has already been submitted. Can you top any of those? Email your suggestions to dropoff at cityofmadison.com. 
Before we go, we wanted to take a beat to give a huge thanks to Cap Times for including us, our CityCast Madison team, and their latest cover story, 12 People to Watch in 2023 in Madison. Thank you so much to the whole Cap Times team, and especially Lindsay Christians, the food editor and arts reporter, for that thoughtful write-up. We are honored, and 2023, look out. You ain't seen nothing yet. That's all for today here on CityCast Madison. I'm Bianca Martin. If you enjoyed the show, why not tell someone you know who loves to hate winter about us? We'll be back Thursday with more from around the city. Talk soon. These winter bikers are incredibly hardcore.